welcome to the Live Loud Life Podcast. My name is Dr. Antonio, your host of the Live Loud Life Podcast. Our goal is to help bring you vital information, great information that helps you and your families live long and loud lives. We believe families deserve more from their healthcare providers, and we hope that this medium through this podcast can help uh, provide you some tidbit and some tidbits and nuggets that help fill those gaps that maybe you're not getting answers some of the questions that you're not getting answers to from your healthcare providers because we believe that families deserve more from their healthcare providers. Today, what we're going to be talking about, we're just going to dive right in is why stretching might not be the best if you're pregnant, okay? Now, we see the re- and we're going to go into the the why's behind this, but what we're looking at and what we're trying to help with is the, are, are the general aches and pains that come with pregnancy. Now, globally, globally, if you're to ask, I would say and and I'm and I'm obviously making this number up. This is a 100% an estimation here. But if you were to ask over 90% of the healthcare providers out there, what should I do if my hip hurts, if my shoulder hurts, if you know, if my neck hurts, if my back hurts, what do you think that answer is going to be? Yeah, just stretch it. Doesn't tell you how, doesn't tell you when, where, how long. Just stretch it. All right, well, shit, I'll Google. How do I stretch so-and-so, right? And and is it going to help? I would say for a large pop, a large portion of the of, of the people that are trying stretching, you're going to get some benefit. Now, it's not because what you think is happening. Because again, more times than not, it's directed towards, oh, well, it's tight. So you need to lengthen those muscles. And there's a lot of argument around whether strength or sorry, stretching is actually lengthening tissue or not. And we're not getting into that today. But what stretching does do is provide wonderful mechano uh, receptor input to the area, to the muscles, to the tendons, to the joints. And that in turn helps desensitize and reduce pain. Interestingly enough, though, we also see that same benefit through movement exercise, training, resistance training, so on and so forth. We see mechanical load into the tendons and the muscles and the joints, and oftentimes that will provide the same, if not better, pain relief depending on what's going on. Now, when I say this, I still recommend stretching. There are certain stretches that I think just people respond well to, and it helps kind of cut the edge off from the aches and pains or the tension that they're feeling for maybe sitting too long as I've been sitting here batching some of these episodes. Um, uh, but there's also a ton of benefit in just trigger point ball work, right? Using a trigger point ball to dig into some of the muscles and the knots that you have and, and to also then stretch and load and, and work those muscles in that capacity. Now, what does that have to do with pregnancy? So we know relaxing uh, during pregnancy helps relax the connective tissue within your body so that when when it's time to go into labor, you can actually, the, uh, a female's body can actually open up, right? The pelvis, the ligaments and everything stretch and the sacrum moves backwards and the pelvis, the pelvic inlet and outlet open up so that baby can come through, right? Now that's, the that's the the thing that most people know relaxing to 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 do and we assume that because pregnancy lasts about 40 weeks that it's highest at 40 weeks interestingly enough what you're going to see in, as far as the the influx or sorry the increase in relaxing hormone release into the body you're going to see a start a sharp increase during the first trimester. So that first trimester, you're going to see a rapid increase in relaxing at around 12 weeks, and then it's going to start to drop down, and then it tapers off at around 14 to 15 weeks, and then it kind of flat lines all the way out until 40 weeks. Now, why is this? There are other benefits to relaxing outside of loosening connective tissue that also prevent uterine contraction so that we don't miscarriage during that first trimester. That's why a lot of people will not say that they're pregnant until after the first trimester when everything has adequately implanted into the uterine wall. 
So that's why we see this sharp increase. Now, why is this important? We're not going to go we're not going to dive into all of the nuances about relaxin as a hormone, but we wanted to introduce that because this is a very important conversation that we have with all of our pregnant mamas, especially those that are coming in in that first trimester with your classic aches and pains of pregnancy in first trimester. And and OBs and midwives and a lot of people are confused by this because they're like, this is kind of weird. We typically don't see these aches and pains until like end of third trimester when when most women are feeling very pregnant and it feels it feels a lot different. This is why relax and peaks, right? Because there are certain benefits to the hormone outside of the connective tissue laxity that is needed for proper implantation into the uterine wall. But the, the properties of relaxin, as far as loosening connect, connective tissue are still present because the hormone doesn't just say, hey, I'm going to do this, but not do this. So we see this instability, if you want to call it that, and we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more here in a second, because of that sharp, that sharp spike. Now, the instability that we see are primarily more prevalent in those that are already hypermobile. What does that mean? Hypermobility. Think of too much mobility. And this is how you know it might be you, right? So those that gravitate towards yoga and dance and sometimes Pilates because all the movements are really easy and you can excel at them. You might have done cheer when you were younger, or you just generally feel like you're more of a bendy person than other person. Those are hypermobile people. Now on the extreme end, you look at like contortionists, right? We're not talking about that per se. And then on the other hand, I want you to just think of like power lifters, like just think of like stiffness. Now, there's pros and cons to each depending on what activities and things that you're doing. But let's say, for instance, you're someone who's already a little bit more hypermobile as a female, and then all of a sudden you got pregnant, and then you see this sharp spike in relaxing, and, you're f- and your body now feels even more mobile than the arrhythmia hypermobility that you have. So the way I kind of describe this is your connective tissue is what basically holds your structure together, your frame and your bones, right? This is ligaments. This also includes portions of like the tendon that are attached to the muscle, so on and so forth. And those have an inherent and a certain amount of stiffness to them. So obviously someone who's stiffer, they can't move their joints as easily through ranges of motion. Those that have more hypermobility or less stiffness within that connective tissue, you can move your joint a lot easier. So the benefits of that is it gives you a ton of great range of motion and ability to go through ranges of motion with ease and, and limited effort. Now, Let's now say that you have increased levels of relaxin, that stiffness, that that lack of stiffness that you have, or the stiffness that you have, which is already a little bit less, is going to become even stretchier. So your body perceives this in a way of feeling unstable, meaning the, the guardrails or the saran wrap that holds your joints together now being looser, your body feels like your joints are kind of shifting and moving more than normal. Now, do you consciously see this or feel this? No, not necessarily. This is more of a subconscious thing. So what your body will then do is, okay, well, the connective tissue has been more stretched. I'm not getting as much stiffness out of it. How do I then stabilize in order for me to feel like I'm more put together or that I'm not unstable? Well, your nervous system then ramps up muscle tone, meaning it starts tightening up muscle tissue. So it is not uncommon for these individuals to come in within that first trimester and just feel like I just feel stiff in, uh, you know, in certain areas, my hips are really stiff. My back is already achy. You know, my upper back might be a little bit more tight because I'm don't really feel pregnant yet, but yet I'm working a lot and sitting, you know, who knows? I'm just throwing out scenarios and examples, but, uh, but hips and low back are extremely common. So, you know, they just found out they're pregnant. They're establishing care with an OB or a midwife and they're coming. They're like, Hey, I'm, I just found out I'm pregnant. Why do you think I'm feeling so stiff and achy all the time? I you know, I don't know, maybe you had an injury before and pregnancy just kind of like brought that back up, which seems kind of weird, uh, but not necessarily untrue um, because they don't really have this conversation about the increased levels of relaxation. So going back to our previous statement, what do you think is prescribed or recommended? Recommended? Oh, you just need to stretch. You're just tight. So you just need to stretch more. So just stretch, stretch, stretch. 
Now, here's the issue that could happen. You have looser, you have less stiffness within your connective tissue already. You have relaxin, so those that stiffness is even less or you're you're more you're even more stretchy and now you're going to stretch everything, right? So you're stretching things that are already too stretchy. And now all of a sudden your body is feeling like, Hey, I just feel completely loose and things are not good. So I, so then it's going to tighten itself even more. So what we, what we will commonly see with these particular patients, those mamas that are pregnant and feeling these things is they're stretching and they're getting no benefit and, or things are commonly getting worse. Now, if you're seeing a chiropractor or someone who's doing uh, soft tissue, or uh, you know, uh, sorry, if you do, if you're seeing somebody who's doing mobilizations or manipulations, oftentimes your symptoms will be worse because of this exact same thing. You're trying to create more mobility and more range of motion in something that already has too much mobility and range of motion. So, our recommendation. What we talk about day in and day out with our pregnant mamas at Live Loud Chiropractic and Coaching is to cut it out, right? We'll, we'll just say, hey, like, can you just give me, like, give me two weeks, try two weeks of no stretching, and let's, we'll just say, like, hypothetical scientific uh, experiment, two weeks of no stretching, and let's see how you feel. Within, honestly, a couple of days of no stretching, so many of these moms are feeling so much better because they're not stretching, 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 and loosening and loosening, and they're letting the muscles, the muscle tonicity and how and how taut or tone and stiff the muscle is regulate itself out, okay? Now, it doesn't just happen by just not stretching. You also have to be proactive. And so the proactive approach that we take is we still want to give the muscle some love. I'm not saying just throw it to the wayside and forget about it. About it, but the, a lot of the a lot of the discomfort that they're feeling is from the muscles tightening up, and so we don't need to necessarily stretch it. We just need to give it some love, and one of the easiest ways is through a little bit of myofascial or muscle release. What's the easiest way to do that? Take a ball, trigger point ball, preferably something a little bit firmer than a tennis ball, but not as firm as a lacrosse ball. Although it could be, we love using Jill Miller's yoga tune up balls. And you're going to put the wall, the ball on the wall, and you're going to stick your, we're using the hip as an example here. You're going to stick your hip, the meat of your kind of side hip or side butt and butt, and you're going to roll around and massage it out. More is not better. We're just trying to give a little bit of stimulation and mechanical input to downregulate how that muscle feels and ease the aches and pains that you have associated with the whole cycle that we just talked about. Now, on top of that, the way we like to describe it is your body's trying to create stability for a reason. As we just indicated, we're already too stretchy and now you're trying to stretch it. So you're doing the opposite of what your body actually wants. It seems like your body's stiffening up the muscles because it actually wants more stability. So what if we were actually able to give it what it wants, create more stability around the ache the aches and pains or the body part that hurts. So going back to our hip example, what's a way that you can create stability around the hip? Squats, deadlifts, lunges, put a loop band around your knees and do monster walks or those lateral walks. Walking could be good, right? Um, Running might be a little bit too much impact depending on how kind of unstable and off someone's feeling. Uh, But what we're showing is we actually want to use and train and quote unquote, if you want to call it strengthen, more so stimulate contraction of the muscles around the problem area. We're giving stability and stiffness to the area that your body's trying to create stability and stiffness. So we're not trying to counteract and go against what your body's already doing. We're trying to work with the system. And this is why stretching might not be good if you're pregnant. Now, it's very case dependent, very case dependent, because there are other people that actually respond very well to stretching, and stretching is a part of their at-home protocol to ease the aches and pains and relief that they need during pregnancy. So how do we know if this is you? Well, there is a test called the Baton or Baton scale. So I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to visually show some of the things here while I'm sitting, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll link... We'll link a, um, 
uh, a page that'll show the exercises. Actually, we have a we have a video on YouTube. I'll link that that kind of walks you through it. So, here's what it is: you're basically going to put your hand flat. You can have it floating. It's a, sometimes it's a little easier to put it like on your thigh or a table. What you're going to do is you're going to take, uh, and it's a lot easier to just take all of your fingers, but you can start with like just your index or your, and some of the tests just show your pinky. But we like taking all the fingers and just trying to see if you can bend them back. Now, if you find that it's a little stiff and you want to just take the pinky and pull it up, um, I tend to find that most people can get the pinky pretty high, but when you're really trying to assess true hypermobility, we're looking at all of them. So you can see here on the video, like my fingers, if this is zero, my fingers can maybe get up to like 30 degrees. When we're looking at hypermobile individuals, their fingers bend back to like 90 degrees. So I can't do it. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to take the other way and basically pull my fingers up here. So if my palm was up and I bend my fingers, those can go straight up. That's what people can do, but the complete opposite way. So you test both sides. If you can do it on both sides, that's a score of one and one. Okay. Now you're going to put your, you're going to bend your wrist. You're going to take your opposite hand and try to pull your finger to touch your forearm. So you got to kind of look at the videos to understand this, but my wrist and my forearm are kind of making a seven or a snake. If you've ever seen uh, dodgeball and you're going to take your thumb now and just try to pull and touch your forearms. You can do it on both sides. Now you're going to hyperextend both of your elbows and we're looking to see if your elbows go past 180 degrees. And then you're going to do the same thing with both knees. Uh, we call it, it's called genuine bottom. If your if your knees go into hyperextension, meaning you can actually bend your knees past extension further than like 180 degrees. And then I want to see if you can palm the ground. So you put your feet together, your legs stay straight, and want to see if you can palm the ground. Now there are obviously certain people who can palm the ground who aren't hypermobile, but this is a scale for a reason. So different different scales or protocols kind of have different criteria but if we're if you're over a 4 or 5 for me females you're considered hypermobile if you're over a 6 for males you're considered hypermobile so is that written in stone like are there various degrees yes but the, it's a little bit what I have found is that you can go through this test on your own and get kind of a good representation or scale of where you sit. But just as a clinician or a provider, like doing this and feeling that end range, I'm looking to see like how much give does your joints have when I put it through range of motion. So for instance, your elbow, if I, if I take your elbow and I go into hyperextension, I try to push it into a little bit more hyperextension. Everyone has an end feel of where the bones stop, but some people have a little bit more kind of squish to that end feel. And that's real, realistically what gives me a good idea if this individual, if this mama is hypermobile or not, and that automatically will dictate and change the narrative that I have with her to help her with her aches and pains. And more importantly, to also, help her as she's training and trying to maintain exercise and fitness throughout pregnancy because there are certain nuances and elements around hypermobility that that is super beneficial to be aware of not to scare her to say hey don't do this or this just like hey if i don't know if you knew but you're actually hypermobile and now that you have a little bit more relaxing elevated relax levels of relaxing in your body you're going to feel even more hypermobile or a little bit you know more kind of gumby or uh, what some people will refer or maybe most know this associated with is like, think of like double jointed. Like if you, someone's ever called you double jointed or you've heard double jointed and you think you're double jointed, that's hypermobility, right? So it really helps you set the stage for their pregnancy and having that information is super powerful to set them up for the best success for activity and, and what to do when aches and pains come. So that's called the bait and scale. That's a good that's a good representation or scale to help you determine if you are within that category and, and and how stretching might not be advantageous for you. Again, might. This isn't written in stone, but again, we tend to see this time and time again where someone's coming in and they're coming in with first trimester aches and pains. And I I had a gout literally just last week. I haven't been able to do CrossFit because of this, this, and that. And I'm hurting and I'm I'm early stage pregnancy. So I don't have a lot of energy. So I'm not working out really hard, but I want to be able to move. And you know, my hips are hurting. So I'm just stretching a lot. I'm doing a lot of yoga and all this stuff, and I'm just not getting better. Cut the yoga out. Go back to CrossFit right now. Do a super light, easy workout. Tell me how you feel. Better. 
right? Not against prenatal yoga. I think prenatal yoga is great, but but I think that's one of the the movements or the protocols that gets over recommend over recommend. Re- recommended because it's light and it's easy and you're working on stretching and opening. There's a time and place. But if you're not past 37 weeks, I don't really want you doing a lot of opening up, right? Baby's not coming yet. We don't need to do a lot of opening. We need to do a lot of stability training and understand the difference of opening and tightening. Now, when the time comes, yeah, I want you to know how to loosen. I want you to know how to relax. I want you to know how to turn off. I want you to know how to open, to open up the lanes in the highway and reduce any restrictions or tension so baby can do what baby needs to do and mama can help out, okay? So stretching, it's wonderful. I think it's great, but you got to know when and where to do it. And when it comes to pregnancy, there's a lot of you out there just hammering away with stretching and not getting anywhere and or getting worse. And now you're robbed of your walks. Now you're robbed of your exercises and you feel like you can't do much. I don't want that. I want you to be able to enjoy pregnancy and get outside, especially if you're pregnant now when I'm talking about this. It's 60 degrees in Colorado and everyone's trying to maximize their time outside. And that's what I want you to be able to do. I want you to live a loud pregnancy so that you are active and there's so much benefit and carry over to exercising, not only from the mom perspective, but also for fetal development and brain development. Um, uh, that just reminds me, I should get my wife on here to talk about the benefits of exercising during pregnancy. So we all know those things and it's very similar to the previous episodes we had. We know exercising like good, but sometimes we don't know how good it can be. And when you're hurting, it's, it's, it makes it so much harder. So sometimes just having a conversation with the right person to tell you the right information makes all the difference. So if you're unsure if stretching is right for you and you're pregnant, we'd love to help you out. Again, this is something that could be easily done from a consultation. So if you're not living nearby us and you want to just have a conversation about how can I set myself up for success for for the right uh, for the right amount of exercise and fitness during pregnancy and what do I do when I'm when I'm hurting uh, or I have aches and pains? right? We just get on a phone call, do a Zoom call, and we can tell you everything that you need to know. And I guarantee it'll make all the difference. And then you supplement that with all the other information that you're getting from your OB, or your midwife, your other providers, and you're going to have a fantastic pregnancy. I promise you that. So, um, I hope this was super helpful for you mamas out there. Uh, I know it can be a little tough because like you're getting information from the OBs and the midwives and you're getting information over here and you're getting information from us. Uh, We're not trying to contradict everyone, uh, anyone. We're just simply trying to give you another perspective that most people are not getting and not sharing. And it makes it makes the world a difference for those individuals, and it, and it empowers them, and it gives them so much more back in their life. So they're not beating their head up against the wall trying to figure out what to do with all these aches and pains, especially in that early trimester where they're just like, "How am I? How am I supposed to go through two more trimesters living and feeling like this?" Right? If you can get that back early trimester, then you're going to be well better off for second and third. So. If you have a friend, if you have a friend who's pregnant and you know they're dealing with these early signs and symptoms, please share this video with them. Please share our contact information with them. We'd love to get in touch with them. Our Instagram handle is at live.loud.life. You can connect with us there. You can shoot us an email, hello at liveloudlife.com. Dot com. Um, obviously, follow us on YouTube and subscribe to our um, uh, our podcasts and, and our YouTube channel because we're going to be dropping all uh, a lot more information and we have a lot of other episodes and, and, and information or pertain to a lot of the same things. So, um, thank you so much for paying attention. Congratulations if you're pregnant and you're watching this. Congratulations, uh, Parenthood is by far the hardest thing that I have ever done. It challenges me day in and day out. Uh, I just pray and I hope that I can be the best father that I can be to my kids. Uh, and I know you guys want the same thing. Uh, and it starts from, it starts, it starts from pregnancy. So you guys are doing, doing the right thing and doing it well. So, uh, I appreciate that. And, uh, and I appreciate seeing other parents out there working hard and, and really trying to, to set their families up for as much success as they can. So we believe families deserve more and we hope that we can help your family. So till next time guys, live loud. Mm-hmm.